Terrence Hickey, he was one of the first responders who showed up. Uh, he saved something like over four people. Uh, I believe he fell through like a floor or two, uh, injured his back, ended up in the hospital. Uh, his and he was a cop, right? He yes, was, he was a cop. Yep, he, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So he was he acted as a first responder yes. in that, uh, on that day, right? Yes, he was. Uh, you know, he, this may uh, irritate some of our in-cap audience, but he was a good cop. Uh, and the irony here is, a lot of times you'll hear people say stuff like, "The only good cop's a dead cop," and well, okay, this one's dead, so that should tell you something. Um, <laughs> 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 so even by AMCAP logic, he's a good cop. He's the, yes, <laughs> exactly. He genuinely seemed like he's trying to do the right thing. Uh, but yeah, his uh, ex-wife uh, Tanya Yiki, the mother of his two kids. He had two daughters. Uh, they were both, I believe, like under five. Um, you know, she picked him up from it. He some, seemed shaken up. I believe at some point that might have been during there or later. Uh, she, he said something to her along the lines of "It's not what they're telling you." Uh, he that is one thing with the story. He's he was very he never explicitly said stuff, but it, it seemed to be he was trying to protect people, which I can understand. Yes. If can, you know, can we just say one thing by the way, which I, I probably should have mentioned before, um, like leading into the story. I'm sorry to cut you off. Is that Another aspect of the story is that all day as it was happening, it was live reported on the news that there were many other explosives found inside the building. Yes. And this was and and this isn't just like, oh, someone said it. It's not like 9-11 where there's like, oh, I got a firefighter here who's like, hey, yo, I heard something else bang inside the building. Not to downplay that, but that's kind of like what you have for 9-11. We're talking about. There was there were hundreds of people who died and the building is if you ever see the pictures of OK, uh, OK, see the building is like, you know, there's a big crater like a quarter of the building down and there's this big search uh, uh, rescue operation going on and they were all pulled back several mm -hmm. times. Like as they're searching for the bodies of dead children or, or perhaps living children, they're pulled back over and over again because there are these reports of bombs inside the building. And so like that's that's a whole nother aspect of this that and there's many avenues to go down from that. But anyway, back to the story of, of this cop, Terrence, he was talking about that, too, that he was a part of this search effort as they're constantly being pulled back. In fact, there's firsthand accounts of people who were like helping a dying person under the rubble and then had to leave them and and come back to not you know they're dead now or whatever so there's anyway i just thought that should be that should be mentioned but yeah I, I believe in that uh cnn article by the uh uh you know thomas lake which magically is one of the good ones i guess it somehow got over there because it was actually a good article this. yeah at least on this uh but he i believe it's in that article he talks about that uh, goes into a little bit of that stuff and i think you know terrence actually did have to you know come back at one point because of that reason and, and uh i think there was some person he was about to save uh, uh, left and then end up coming back and save them something along those lines i might be remember that wrong but yeah that would definitely be something that tipped them off like hey what the heck now for explanations of that like uh this is scott horn may have discussed this with you i know he talks about this one a lot the the atf and this is stuff that i believe has basically been admitted it's actually i think in the okc museum uh someone showed me the okc bombing museum someone i think showed me a picture of this today um where it was the idea that they were storing uh, explosives and stuff in the ATF. And I, I vaguely remember some, some, someone somewhere saying that that was like improper, like they weren't supposed to do that, which, I mean, that kind of seems like common logic that you shouldn't be storing like, like tow missiles and stuff in a, in a building with like civilian, like you think you'd have a storage location or something for that kind of stuff. Uh, seems a weird place to hold it. So uh, I know I don't think this makes it really any better. Uh, you know, that that's the case. Uh, and that could also probably account because there were, um, there were accounts of people that said stuff like they thought there were like secondary explosions and stuff. So that could account for it because if you had an ordinance in there and a bomb goes off, that would obviously could trigger off secondary explosions. So that could explain it. Now, there are also on the other side of things. There are actually legit uh, eyewitness reports. I think there were two. I want to say there were two women that uh, said they saw someone. I, you know, I don't know if it was days or like a week prior. They saw someone in like a you know, setting on like pillars that kind of had looked like they had like kind of sort of construction or you know, looking type stuff on. And they were like setting what looked like charges on columns, you know, do with that what you will. Uh, I think the, the, they were, I don't think there's anything that's really, you know, taps of their credibility, but I don't know two eyewitnesses do with that what you will. I mean, you could, uh, I t we, most of us people that seem to get in this uh, or they're trying to be honest, tend to stray away from that. Cause once you go into like the bombing stuff, that's when people start flagging you some kook. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I'm like, open well, look, to either, I mean, the range, know? the range is from 
There were other bombs inside the building that were a part of the coordinated att attack. Okay, if that makes you a kook, then, like, fine. And and to be fair, like, yeah, we don't have, like, real proof that that's what happened. Um, but the, the other end of the range is that, oh, no, what really happened was that the ATF, who, by the way, miraculously, none of them were hurt, uh, in this event that they had other, you know, weapons that they weren't supposed to have in the building. And so they faked these calls to, to halt the rescue operation so they could get them out. And in the process, let God knows how many innocent people die. You know what I mean? But like, so it, you're like, eh, even at the, even at the not kook range of this explanation <laughs> is still like really horrific. And then what's, what would be the official story? The official story of it is like, you're like, well, why did the rescue operation get halted several times because of reports of bombs inside the building? And their their explanation is, ah, that didn't really happen. Hey, yeah, it was just a mistake. Just like, yeah, like the other, just like John Doe too. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it, yeah. it didn't really exist, turns out. Everyone yeah. hallucinated. Yeah, I saw it like I was mentioning the OKC bombing museum thing. This this kind of irritated me. They, there was pictures. I had someone sending me like pictures from the OKC bombing memorial museum or whatever. And you, there are pictures of them like kind of handling the ordinance, the like that stuff. And they are literally in like I think they had flak helmets on, and then just normal gear. Aside from that, there were dudes in like windbreaker, ATF windbreaker jackets and like jeans, and and they. And that is how they're handling this stuff, which you would think you'd be in full bomb. Like if this is something you're that concerned about, you're willing to call off rescue efforts and you're just chilling in like jeans and a windbreaker. Like, man, <laughs> <laughs> like really, if this is how much, how serious you're taking it, why can't we continue rescue efforts? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I know, maybe it's a, some technicality, some bureaucratic nonsense. Uh, either way, it's, it's, I, I don't know that, that, I don't know. But anyways, that is one possibility of like what set, what, pinged for uh yiki uh i you know um uh there's also there's things to suggest maybe he may have gotten his hands on although this is kind of loose he may have gotten his hands on the surveillance videos possibly that's one angle which then he'll see john doe too uh i'm trying to think of what else but essentially he oh yeah uh, the, the main thing which he actually said in a letter this is uh to a letter his friend ramona this is like you can find there's a great Hoffman article. Uh, I believe Dave Hoffman uh, wrote about it. Uh, and I believe you can find that at Libertarian Institute if you type it up. Uh, but um, in that article, they're going on about how he w found it extremely suspect that with him being one of the first responders there, he got there. And the, when he got there, the ATF was already there in full riot gear. And he's like and he was one of the first people, if not the first people. I've heard some people say first. I don't know. Uh, if it's one of the first, the first, either way, the idea that the ATF could beat him in full riot gear, uh, you know, when they weren't there that mor morning, uh, what is going on? I, I don't know. So I think there was a lot to suggest. Obviously, we're kind of conjecturing what does he possibly know? I don't know. Either way, he wasn't buying the official narrative. Uh, there was lots to suggest. I believe this is in the letter as well where he had a, like a six page report that he wrote up for his office and he had a back and forth fight with his higher ups where they want him to take out a bunch of stuff, uh, reduce the amount of pages. Uh, this became a whole thing. Uh, essentially this all, also he, with his ex-wife Tanya Yiki, he was begging her to remarry him uh, despite him already having another girlfriend because he his reasoning was in case anything ever happens to me, I want you to be able to receive the life insurance money. Uh, right. he, there were a lot of people reporting that he seemed very shook up uh during or you know around that time there were things like tanya yiki his ex-wife was like uh, i think she reported something like eight to ten times there were like nails in her tires were in stuff like that so there's a lot of weird stuff going on a lot of weird stuff when you dig into it i mean there, there's even more but ultimately he ends up uh you know he ends up they dead uh people they find at one point they find his uh they find his uh car covered in blood uh, the, the seats are ripped up. There looks like there's burn mats on the floor. Uh, the doors are locked. And, you know, that flags people, um, you know, to start looking for, you know, obviously you find a car covered in blood. What's going on? They, they start looking around for him and eventually they find him. And it, it's the lowest estimates, a half mile. The highest is a mile and a half. They find the body uh, away from the car. Uh, he had lost two pints of blood. Uh, he had slash marks all over his wrist. His throat was cut. 
uh, he had what looked like, uh, you know, rope burns on his body. It looked like, uh, you know, he had handcuff marks on him. Uh, there was dirt and, and grass in the wounds, which would be highly suggestive of dragging a body. Uh, there was a bullet wound to the head, which is at an odd angle. It was an upward angle like this, uh, you know, which I don't mean, know who the hell is going to shoot themselves. Like it also wasn't point blank because you can tell by the gunshot residue and the mark that it left that, you, that like it wasn't point blank. It had to be slightly from a distance. I'm not saying it was from like super far away, but far enough that there wouldn't be any gunshot residue, like any major gunshot residue. Uh, and you know, at an upward angle, Yiki was a big guy. He was a corn fed looking dude. Uh, yeah. he was like over six feet tall, built like an, like a, probably like a tight end, like, uh, not like fat, but like he was corn fed, you know, he, he's a big dude. Uh, so that probably is an odd angle from do after already losing two pints of blood. Um, the first right. cop that should go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, it's like <laughs> the idea after the whole official story where this John Doe 2 that every single witness saw didn't happen and every single ATF uh, agent was able to avoid being uh, hurt or killed in this blast. And then you have this guy who who kills him. the guy who was saying like one of the first responders, this sergeant there who's like, yeah, none of this adds up. And then he kills himself by slicing his wrists slicing his neck dragging himself through the grass and then shooting himself in the back of the head like that's his method of suicide you just go i don't know man this story and this is such a big story again pre 9 11 what's what's labeled as the biggest domestic terrorist attack in american history this is your story this is the official narrative and it really is this is the official narrative that yep i guess that's how he killed himself 